my camera here. Mercy. Dealing with the stupid drivers again. The way they drive, it's just going to be a matter of time that we actually get video of an accident happening. The way they drive. to see they got a lot of moisture up here this year, this winter. It seems like every year I come over here to Flagstaff, there's a fire burning in these, in these them there hills. The subway restaurant to the left there. Hit that a few times, you gotta park on the shoulder on the right here, jot across the highway to get something to eat. They have a cool steakhouse over there by the uh, Little America truck stop there in Flagstaff. It's across the street, can't think the name of it, but it can be looked up easily on new Google Maps. They uh, have like a show goes along with the uh, with your dinner theatrical type stuff pretty cool I ate there one time this guy separated his tractor from his trailer I wonder why Those of you who've never been to Arizona, not all of it is desert. We've got a pretty decent mountain range. We're cutting along the northern part of the state, running from east to west.
Another driver I was talking to today said that California just came out with a new list or an updated a revision of their penal code for traffic offenses. If you're caught using your phone in a CMV, commercial motor vehicle, which we're riding in right now, it's $2,500. So you never wanted to get popped for touching your phone in the California state. Well, their liberal policies have drained the coffers and their aim is to fill them back up. One to five mile an hour is, used to be a $250 fine. Now it's 500. Don't know what it is from six to 15 or whatever if they do it. It was 250, now it's 500. The $2,500 phone bill is now 5K. Five grand if you touch your phone whilst driving. That is just effing insane. I keep mine on the dash. I touch it sometimes. I don't hold it. See that? My lane departure warning went off and we didn't leave the lane. <laughs> I gotta turn it down because the noise is irritating AF. But he said he was gonna send me a link to the revision of the hell state. But he said he doesn't want to go out there anymore. Which this company's pretty easy to work with. Him and I both started. He started a month later than I did. Been with his com company it was seven years in October. He was November. There was like I want to say 35, 40 drivers. Now we have 160. get bigger and bigger and bigger. The owner does. It's a family business. A father is an Air Force veteran. Now he's going to give it to his son who is doing all the building of it right now. And that's why I stayed with this company for so long. So I figured I'd work here for a year until I found something better. After that time, I quit looking. Started at 40 cents a mile, and now we're at 58 cents a mile. For a senior driver. I'm number four, he's number five on the seniority list. Buy new trucks, that's why he keeps giving us new trucks. I seem to get one like every eight months. Put about a hundred thousand on a truck and get another one. One of the perks of being on that seniority list. 
so he can ask to go to other other directions, uh, other areas. I need to tell this new dispatcher. I want to go back east. It's been a while. I always speak through California. I'm just doing it's traffic is doing 70. We're supposed to be at 55. Well, it totally impedes traffic out there on the highways, especially the 15. And I don't know how many times I'm going to get out of this since we're clear. I'm going to get beat to hell by all the bumps on the road right there. But just going with the flow of traffic or close to it, then you'll get a tractor who will try to pass somebody who's doing 57 and they'll pass them at 58 and they'll do it it'll take them three miles to pass not me I put the pedal to the metal get around that person and then go back to cruising at about 60 to 62 sometimes 65 well, some of you might say, oh, you should, you should be getting a ticket for that. Well, I had a state patrolman, highway patrol, California highway patrol. I was cruising at 63. He was cruising at 65. It was nighttime. I just happened to look down and said, oh, shit. There he is. Totally left me alone. Like some people, why are you in the left lane? And I did that video about that poor guy came down that mountain with no brakes, crashed into those people there a couple weeks ago. It's like the we're not California yet. Colorado is not, not California yet. It means it's coming, it's just not there yet. So, we can drive in the left lane. Now, when you get out on a highway like this, out on Interstate 70 and 20, 25, the left lane is only for passing, which is how I travel. I got the same kind of crap from people in my 150 or 130 mile snow video. Why am I in the hammer lane during that storm? And in that particular case, there's a lot of people going slow, really slow. People merging on and off the freeway. And in those slippery conditions, it's safer to be in the hammer lane instead of weaving back and forth, back and forth. Because I travel at a higher speed on the snow than most other semi-drivers. I do close to the speed limit because I know how to drive in it. As far as brakes, steering, throttle. Not doing too much of those. And then keeping my eyes peeled way ahead. If I can't see, I slow way down. If I can see plenty far enough, I do the speed limit. I'm not going to end up in the ditch, in the median, because I lost control of my truck. Anyway, I got a lot of crap from people about that. In Colorado, in town, there's three lanes. That passing law doesn't apply because all three lanes are completely full. So I'm riding in the hammer lane because I got my pedal to the middle, as if I'm light. If I'm heavy, I'm in the middle lane. Until I get to climbing the hills, then I'm in the far right lane. But if I'm light, I'm gonna be doing 70 miles an hour in the 65 in the left-hand lane. Because you always get somebody doing 60 middle lane, 
and then you got the people coming on and off in the really heavy trucks in the far right lane. So that is why I do that. And I think in that video I was trying to get over, but I had a car that was keeping me from getting in the middle lane. So I finally had to wait till it moved before I got over. So yeah, it passed me on the right. So I was waiting for it, them to move. As soon as they moved, I got over. I thought about reacting to it in the comments, but I'm just like, you know, maybe I should just write one explanation, copy and paste it to each feed comment. As of now, I just let it go. Let it go. 67 degrees outside. We are northbound 95. Pretty sure 95, not 100%. Or maybe it's 89. I think it's 89. And we're going to find out right here. Northbound 89. There we go. 67 into 65. Ooh, I'm telling. Left to drive today. I don't know if we can make Cayenta. I know you make Tuba City, but there's really no where to park in Tuba City. I think that's the capital per se of. Navajo Nation. But I know the Navajo Nation's in New Mexico, Arizona, and Utah. Fairly good sized chunk. More power to them. Six zero between Cayenta, Arizona, and Tuba City, Arizona, and the reason it's dark is I got a call from a good friend of mine, so I mean her chit-chatted for a bit. 
friend Amy from Ramby. Hey, girl. Anyway, uh, I think we'll finish this video up tonight with a little bit of a nighttime jaunt and an explanation of something you should really pay attention to driving this highway at night. Pretty much most of the Indian highways. My high beams are on right now, so it's lit up pretty good. Turn the high beams off. Drops visibility down deep. The Indians walk right on that white line. Hitchhiking. So, you have got to pay attention on this highway all the time. Because it wouldn't take much to just die drift over a little bit. Boom. If you're not paying attention, you can kill one of the guys. That would suck. For them and for the driver. definitely want to pay attention. Wild horses will usually get up on the edges. But you got to watch out for them as well. I'm pretty sure it's open range for cattle. Never had any issues with the cows. Never had any issues with the horses. Come close. But I had a lot of issues with people nighttime walking down the highway. At least in the daytime you can see them plenty of time in advance. But at night not so much. And they, they don't definitely do not use any high vis high visibility protective gear. Reflector eyes that would your lights would shine them up a long time before you even get close to see them. Well, I don't explain that to you, you know how it works. But that's one of the pitfalls of this highway at night. We have an hour left. We get to Cayenta, spin it down for the night. Nice high beams, bud. Kind of brighter, though. Turned them off at the last second. After I blasted him. So until the next time we ride again. Take care. Enjoy. Peace.